early age, I realised what the natural environment around me had to offer. Through kite surfing, the wind has taught me to respect the ocean and the elements that have become the basis to my career as a pro kiteboarder. Realising nature's ability to shape our world and provide some of the best playgrounds imaginable it has been my desire to make the most of this playground that has facilitated my journey through the kiteboarding industry for the last 22 years. I've been pushing the edges of what is possible, developing myself as a digital nomad in the age of the internet in order to devote myself to the sport that has become a pillar to so many people in their lives. In this movie, I define an era of innovation inspired by wind that will lead us into the future of possibility that is now defined by free riding. At the beginning, for me, it was all about finding purpose. This led me into competition, becoming a national champion, which led onto the world freestyle scene. And then after four years of competing on the world tour into the wake style scene with competitions like the Triple S and even a spot of big air before the injuries started. Once I had exhausted my competitive aspirations, my love for the sport took my search much deeper. I needed to understand how the tools of my trade are made, and more importantly, the motivation of the people that make them. The equipment that is made to make the world's most extreme conditions into a play park, and the riders whose lives rest in the balance every time they hit the water. My journey so far has given me the opportunity to get behind the curtain of the industry to explore what makes the industry tick and to understand exactly what kiteboarding has become today. So, for the first stop in this movie, I head to the Duotone headquarters in Munich, Germany. The office team is a talented collection of designers, industrial engineers and innovative thinkers, unshackled by traditional thinking and encouraged to push the limits of what is possible with each design. Kiteboarding itself is a sport that was born from innovation with a cross-pollination of different extreme water sports that led to the invention of the sport that we now use to enhance our freedoms on the water. And even today, this innovation has only just begun. Kiteboarding is also shaped by the destinations and there are several locations around the world that have become pillars of the kiteboarding industry. Cape Town is a striking cosmopolitan city bridging the gap between the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Warm water meets the cold currents creating the perfect mix that provides some of the most constant and strong winds on the planet.
People are drawn from all over the world by the promise of clear skies and strong winds delivered by the Cape Doctor, whipping the tablecloth over the mountain and setting the stage for an incredible kiteboarding season from November until March each year. Pro riders, designers and the heads of brands converge to share their stoke on the sport and exchange ideas and develop the equipment that we all use. Lasse was meeting me here on the beautiful beach in Langebahn and he was complaining. He said like, Ralph, when I'm with my 9 meter dice and 45 knots, it starts to deform. And I looked at him and said, first of course I was laughing, he said like, man, maybe Lasse it's related to the fact that the kite was never designed to work in 45 knots. Because 45 knots was a 9 meter, you have, whatever, 20 people in the world eager and motivated to do something like this, but not more. But still, I said like, well, if you are looking for something stable, I will make you the kite more stable. And I made him a new bridle configuration. I removed the pulley and we tweaked the kite for about a couple of hours and then he took it, he was happy, and then we realized, okay, within this process, that there are no downsides. We are here behind the scenes of the Rebel King of the Air. We are going to check out the event setup. This year I am editing the main event highlights for Red Bull South Africa. And we're going to take this opportunity to catch up with the team, catch up with the riders, catch up with the event team, and see what goes into putting on one of the biggest kiteboarding events on the planet. Judges are looking for 70% height and 30% extremity. I think like big air has no boundaries. I think it's just going off and it's like every year it's more impressive and you know like the likes of Ayrton this year are gonna spice it up again. And I think it's, uh, there's, there's a bright future for big air, that's for sure. And now we go back in time to take a look at what goes into making one of the first duotone kites. To do this, I headed to the beginning of the kiteboarding story, to the kite production in Sri Lanka. To really get a feeling for the materials that we ride and the level of complexity behind the construction. So if you've ever wondered what a kite surfing production facility looks like. Whether that is the highly skilled labour or the changes in the materials that lead to the progression of our products. It's amazing really how much goes into making a kite.
Each element that goes into a kite is meticulously thought about and produced with the love of the sport in mind. A kite is the culmination of skilled labour, experts in their field and hundreds of different parts and processes that result in a perfect recipe for performance. Once the kites are produced, the next step in the process is to put them to the test. Uh, it's impressive to see exactly how many parts go into making a kite and how much effort and care and attention to every detail goes into making a kite. So here it is, the full production for Duotone. So just up the road from the production facility lays the rolling expanse of lagoons that is Calpicha. From the air into the water, as we play with these elements, it is important to understand what combines them beneath our feet. So to find out a bit more about how the boards are made, my next stop was deep in the Austrian countryside. Uh, that's the one. Ticket. It's not as simple as you might think to create the perfect mix of strength, shape and flexibility. Harnessing the right materials for performance whilst implementing non-toxic resins and hydro-powered moulds to save our playgrounds where we can. From the wood core to the materials laminated around it, every step in the process makes a difference. Wow, this is cool. All, all the, the raw material, all the wood, as you can see, all the ABS side walls, as you can see, the colored one on the right. Yeah, the raw material of the front end base for kiteboard, the, the wider ones. <laughs> So, it's where it all starts. 
with the wood core. Polonia. So what, what, what's the reasons why you use polonia wood? Yeah, it's super strong, super light, good for milling. And this is what creates the foundation for every one of our boards. Strength and flexibility. Once the boards come off the production line, the next priority is to get the boards into the hands of our pro team so that the materials can be pushed to the limits and the construction tested to the max. True performance is always measured by its results, so as soon as the boards are finished, they are shipped out. There is no better place on earth to test twin tips than the flat water lagoons of northern Brazil. Northern Brazil is a kiteboarding paradise, with the constant trade winds that blow over some of the best freestyle waters on the planet, with the freestyle pro team gathering from all over the world to put their boards and bodies through their paces. With two of the world's biggest freestyle and strapless competitions hosted each season, this is where world champions are made. So my name is Valentin Rodriguez, I'm from Colombia, 17 years old and yeah, I just won my 2019 first world title. It's a really addictive feeling, you know, this year I won it back. True progression is more than just the perfect conditions. It's about the company, the meeting of minds, some of the world's best riders across disciplines, across generations, and across styles, all gathering together in the same lagoon on the far side of the world to achieve the same goal, to push the limits of what is possible on a kiteboard.
As the sport was born of innovation itself, it is no surprise that the innovation has kept going. And the most noticeable example of this over the last years has been the hydrofoils. A few years ago, it was a strange thought to think that we would all be sailing around on top of 90 centimeter sticks, hovering about the water, but here we are. Hydrofoils have become a pivotal invention, not just in our sport, but across the entire aquamarine industry, capable of increasing wind range, incrementing huge speed gains, and even spawning new sports like wing foiling in the last few years. This is the heart of innovation today. Throughout all of these processes, it's clear to me that kiteboarding has always been and always will be about one thing, and that's making the most of the elements that are around us, having fun on the water, and inspiring true free riding wherever and however we can. <laughs> 